Hello, Explos reports. Did you miss out on some of the stories and events that made the news recently? Don't worry, we've got you covered in this edition. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Obioko. Lagos State Governor Babajide Songolu has signed the year 2022 appropriation bill of 1.75 trillion naira into law. The budget has a slight increase of the grand total from the initial 1.38 trillion naira to 1.758 uh, trillion naira. Sungo Lu noted that the budget is expected to consolidate on the programs of the themes developmental uh, agenda in education, infrastructure, health, will, technology, social intervention, sustainable development goals, and other critical areas. Love Ikuku Yedokun filed the report. Budget of consolidation. That's what Governor Sawunlu called the 2022 budget. He signed it into law at the State House, Alausa Ikeja. The budget has a slight increase in the grant total from the initial 1.38 trillion naira to 1.758 trillion naira. Governor Sawunlu explained reasons for the increase. It's not that the House Assembly are appropriating budgets to themselves or just, you know, um, um, we had that conversation. And it's because we both agree and realize that we need to capture in the full budget you know, all of our financing options that we have deployed for the Blue Line and the Red Line projects, which we have raised sufficient funding for, and to be able to put up a level that will not also put pressure on our cash flow and on our debt sustainability. The deficit financing, according to Governor Sawunlu, would be from a combination of external and domestic loans and bonds. These are well within the state's fiscal sustainability parameters. The budget has a capital and recurrent expenditure ratio of 66.34, while the recurrent expenditure is 591.280 billion naira. The capital expenditure is 1.166 trillion naira, which brings the budget total size to 1.758 trillion naira. The 2022 budget recognizes several other funded project transactions that are now being also accounted for using corporate transactions. Um, there are IFC transactions and there are some other, you know, off balance transactions that we've all seen together. And that is what has given us this very um, um, well-detailed budget size. House Speaker Chairman on Appropriation, Honorable Yisha Ogbolaho, represented the Speaker, Mudashiru Obasa. Yishahu explained that the estimate includes leftovers from previous allocations in the 2021 budget. Yes, it is a budget of consolidation. And um, by the time the Commissioner for Economic Plan and Project probably goes through that budget, we realize that most projects that His Excellency have initiated are going to be completed. Governor Sawunlu had on Wednesday, November 24, 2021, presented the 2022 appropriation bill of over 1.38 trillion naira before members of the State House of Assembly for consideration and approval. From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyeduku for Plus TV, Africa. Moving on, River State Governor Nelson Wike has chided the leaders and people of Ugoni ethnic nationality for promoting disunity among themselves while blaming the backwardness of their area on others. Governor Wike made the accusation at the 30th celebration of Ogoni Day. He wondered if the leaders can truly defend the interests of Ogoni land and genuinely pursue issues of environmental uh, degradation and resource uh, control. Governor Wike said though the federal government may be blamed in some areas, the leaders of the region have given them the opportunity to take advantage of them. He said Ogoni leaders betrayed the cause their leader, Ken Sarawira, and others fought for. He berated the Ogoni leaders for collecting money and pushing the interests of the people aside, 
urging them to be united and ensure the Niger Delta is restored. I disagree with you. The people of Niger Delta are marginalizing themselves. Nobody can buy me. Nobody can eh, buy me. Governors of Niger Delta are not working together. Ministers are not working together. Chairmen are not working together. Traditional rulers are not working together. Who is marginalizing who? You sell yourself for a peanut. You sell yourself for a peanut. People like Ken, all of the people you are celebrating on Holy Day, how many of you can today say you can stand for what Ken stood for? You can stand for the great Ogoni man who died. The River State Governor admonished the Ogoni leaders and the people to stop being used as agents of this cut by the federal government to betray their interests. The chairman of the occasion and President of the Joe National Congress, Professor Benjamin Okaba, said the fundamental problem of the country is the refusal of the Nigerian state to restore the derivation principle that was abrogated by the decree number 34 of May 1966 by Agui Ronsi, among other issues. In his remark, former president of the movement for the survival of the Ogoni people, Mosup, Lidam Mighty, recalled how he and other Ogoni leaders gathered at the same venue 30 years ago to commence the struggle that has since been recognized globally. The fundamental problems of this country is the refusal of Nigerian state to restore the derivation principle that was abrogated by Decree 34 of May 1966 by a the subsequent promulgation of Petroleum, Petroleum Decree 1966 by Gowan and Obasanjo's 1978 Land Use Act, which is considered as the most obnoxious, draconian, and unjust piece of legislation on land and resource ownership. Whilst most of can and must stoutly agitate for the rights of our people, partisan politics should use those agitations to get the benefits of the arbitration for the benefit of the Ogoni people. The Ogoni leaders appealed for the extension of a rail line to their lands. Still in River State, residents of the state and its environs may have been sitting on a keg of gunpowder in the last five years as they continue to tackle hydrocarbon soot droppings. It is not clear where the soot is coming from, but a public health expert, Dr. Dianya Briggs, said it can cause infertility. Dr. Dianya Briggs raises an alarm over the rise in infertility in men residing in Port Harcourt, the river state capital, due to high concentration of soot in the city's atmosphere. He claimed the recent research carried out at the University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital revealed this. The majority of males resident in Port Harcourt, their spent cells have abnormalities, structural abnormalities, which means they cannot impregnate women. So I've given a presentation before when I talked about the suit having the capacity to cause infertility. And somebody was arguing, this is not a story done by me, it was done in 2017. And that's what is there. So yes, the suit can cause infertility. This is a study for males. It can also cause infertility for females. So Environmentalist and gender activist Emen Okun called for a strategic approach to deal with the suit challenge. She spoke alongside others. The public also need to understand the implications of what we inhale or that black thing we notice in our houses and in our offices. So we are looking at increasing awareness, undertaking livelihood activities because if people have to leave the poor fire business, a lot of people are cooking the oil, other people are undertaking the marketing of the product. Air quality monitoring is just one of several interventions or recommendations that have been made by presenters that there is need for us to regularly monitor the quality of air in Port Harcourt and even in the wider river states. If we put in place several refineries, all fractions of the crude oil will be well handled and then so the fraction that they lose the one they use in firing their systems can actually be saved in fact in the sense that they can actually make some good uh, profit from that. We recommended 
that we should have a system whereby the license to be given to these modular refinery operators should be slashed down to about 70% so that we can have people come in. I think they need to liberalize and declare a kind of state of emergency on the issue of suit in River State and also be able to address the sources of the suit by providing alternative livelihood opportunities for you who are involved in this. Soot, a black carbonaceous substance, is produced during the incomplete combustion of coal, wood, oil, rising in particles that may become airborne. Health experts said soot causes various types of cancer and lung diseases. It's now time for a short break. We will be right back with more.